Awesome. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, today we have Ryan with us, who's a studio owner as well as a master extension specialist. Um, his bio's awesome. He travels all over. He's <laughs> sought after by everybody. Um, he was voted the 2023 Faces of Sola. Um, he's been on the cover of Modern Salon as a game changer, which we will talk about. Uh, yeah. So welcome, Ryan. Thank you. Happy to be here. Very exciting. We are excited to have you. So how did you get into the industry? Like, where, did you always want to do hair or was it? Yeah, kind of just so when I was seven years old, my aunt, so my aunt was a hairstylist. My grandmother was a kitchen witch. She never professionally did anything, <laughs> but like did the 14 siblings hair and like all of that. So actually when I was seven, my aunt gave me a mannequin head for Christmas, like a professional, legit, like an Amanda, a Samantha, <laughs> those ones <laughs> we like all know. And by the time I was like 12, 13, I had like five of them. And I was always playing with them. I was always like touching people's hair. I loved the feeling of like hair between like my fingers. Um, so I was actually really lucky when I turned 14 and was deciding where I wanted to go for high school. I actually was able to do hair school and high school at the same time. So I went to Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School. Um, so I actually started in the industry very early at 14. Um, I'm, for reference, I'm 28 now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> did that, like I said, did hair school and high school in one, which was such an insane and amazing opportunity. Um, also on the other side of that, no student loans even associated with hair school, even though our loans are way lower than like everyone else. Uh, I like to toss that in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did that at 17. I left Western Massachusetts and moved to Boston. Lived in Boston for about three years. Worked under the co-creator of Living Proof. Did my assisting training. Like really got that like industry knowledge and feel at that like higher level. Like I said, from like 17 to about 2021. 20, 21, I actually moved to Los Angeles, didn't know a single person. All I knew is I wanted <laughs> opportunity and sunshine. <laughs> yeah. So you head west. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so moved here. I always kind of had this idea of I wanted my little slice of heaven and have a studio, um, but knew there was so much I needed to learn before doing that to really enter it in a place where just maximizing your potential and really not like hindering yourself. So I started rebuilding my clientele in LA, started working at some of the top salons, really had an amazing opportunity where I found my business mentor, Kiara Bailey, who created Hair Lingerie. She actually helped open quite a few of the top salons here in LA. And as I was working at them, I got introduced to her and that's where I got introduced to extensions and I'm an insane perfectionist. <laughs> so, mm having a product that was absolutely insane and it was the only extension that ever fooled my eye. I just like totally leaned into that and transformations and mm. I could completely give clients like fucking dream hair. Um, so I started doing that and that honestly naturally led to all of these like amazing opportunities getting being trained by one of the best and then also getting the opportunity to actually license the hair lingerie name and open their first physical location um, as a studio has been really rad. That's awesome. Say, you said something uh, that I want to go back to that yeah. you knew before you opened a studio that you needed to know a lot more. And, yeah. I, and I, I knew a lot to begin <laughs> with. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, I was one of those people who are like, I don't want to say like know it all, but like I had four years of hair school going through high school. Like I was advanced. I was always hungry for knowledge. But being an advanced hairstylist is not being a businessman or woman or person. Mm -hmm. And there's a, and I think what happens in our industry a lot is people forget that component. There's thinking like a hairstylist and there's thinking like a business owner and a business person. They can marry absolutely so beautifully together. Um, but to be successful in a business, you have to have the business component. Um, if you look at some of like the greatest artists of our time, they understood the art, but they didn't understand the business. Years later, someone else made a bunch of money off of them. Yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of that same concept right. to truly know what it takes, how to handle situations. 
like we deal with the public so you never kind of know what can walk through the door what situation i've we've all probably had those moments where like afterwards you're like did that just really happen like is that person real like am i what ha what happened but being able to know how to handle those like i said being able to the trajectory of running the business too. I went from 100,000 to 400,000 just on my revenue within about four years. So being able to do that is also is not something that I knew how to do. Like I said, came from Western Massachusetts, city of about 30,000. You were not taught these things. We're not taught business. I feel like you need to seek it out. I'm a huge component for mentors. Um, I also feel like that word in our industry gets thrown around way too loosely. Uh, well, honestly, kind of any industry. Um, when I say mentor, I'm talking about someone who has been where you are and is where you want to be. They've actually successfully done what you wish to achieve. If they've never done it, they cannot teach you it because they've never done it. It's an idea. Um, so one little thing I like to give people out there when you're thinking about mentors and trying to find someone, find someone who lives a life that you want to live. Whoever you listen to, you will become. And I'm not just talking about salon life. Like, yes, look at their salon life because taking advice from them, you will end up mimicking that in some way, shape or form. But also look at their home life, how they treat people, how they interact with people, the energy of like the whole thing, because whoever you listen to, you become. And you might like it in this one avenue, but you're like, oh, my God, their home life's like atrocious. Mm, like the, it's a whole life thing. <laughs> it's a whole thing it's not just work it's literally I don't believe in like this work-life balancing like everyone also talks about I just don't think that's like a full reality um especially if you're 20 years old there shouldn't be really a light work-life balance <laughs> exactly <laughs> like balance it later when you have time when you've done the thing and like you've hustled <laughs> thank you yeah. I love that you said that too because I'd love for you to talk about that because Sean and I also own salons Mm. And uh, so talk to kind of that younger stylist or the, I shouldn't say younger, the new stylist yeah, yeah, yeah. coming out. Okay. Because that's one of the things that we struggle with is, you know, we always talk about the ideal team player is humble, hungry, and smart, right? Mm -hmm. So smart about their weaknesses and their strength, meaning yeah. that, but also hunger. I feel like that's lacking right now because yeah. of them wanting to be balanced like their parents are, so to speak. And I'm like, okay, it has to be a next level mentor, not someone that's 10, you know, steps ahead of you mentor, yeah. right? So and, talk and if about you do that. find the, the 10 steps ahead, recognizing like my mentor, she's 10 steps ahead, but I recognize, okay, I'm 28. Yeah. Like she's like 42. Yeah. Right. <laughs> There's a difference of being like, okay, I can't also judge myself against like, okay, you've mm -hmm. literally had like 20 more years or whatever to do this and recognizing like, okay, I'm here. They're there. You can end right. up there, but you have like all these steps along the way. Yes. But yes, even kind of on that, like people look so far ahead. You have to worry about the next step. If you can't, do and even something as basic let's just go to like okay salon life assistance they're starting they want it like literally first few weeks you're starting you have you have to do the assisting thing first before you can go on the floor and what i find with a lot of people they're talking and thinking about this thing that's years ahead months ahead right. when they haven't even mastered it's like focus on this focus on that next step then at that next step you can focus on the next on the next on the next um i think a lot of people also with social media are comparing themselves to people like you said whole mm -hmm. different situation many years ahead like even me i'm 28 but i've been in the industry since i was 14 so some people are like oh my god but he's like 28 well so it's been 15 years this if you started five years ago okay you still got like 10 to go in that yeah. realm. I'm all for, if you can right. do it faster, please do it faster. Like love to see people succeed and do it faster than we all like did before. Absolutely. That's amazing too. Um, refresh me on the question again. And I love, well, first of all, I, you dropped a bomb earlier and you said you went from a hundred thousand to 400,000. <laughs> okay. And although we're going to say like, what's your secret? We know it took a lot of little steps. A lot of, there. yeah. The before, Talk about those a lot steps. Of, things in place, a lot of habits, really, 
I don't want to say changing okay. who you are, but you do. You have to change. You have to change your habits. Like you have yeah. to become a different person because a person making a hundred thousand dollars in revenue, two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars in revenue are all different people. Mm-hmm. They have different habits. They have different. It's mindset is like a lot of it. If you think like a hairstylist, which the average hairstylist in the United States makes twenty seven thousand mm-hmm. dollars, like average some people are like what it's like no no that's the high like I'm over here at the highest there's also like the lowest and like that's like right in between um that's the reality so if you think average do what everyone else does and take all the exact same steps you end up in the exact same place and unfortunately average has a number and we know that number is twenty seven thousand dollars a year um so you have to think differently and like I said it plays on that thinking like a business person putting that business hat on, thinking, what is my intention here? What do I want to achieve? What's that next step? Um, And honestly, really being very aware of yourself is like a huge thing. You need to know who you are, like amazingness and faults and and be aware of it and, and interact with the world and set up things based on like, okay, I know I'm going to do this. It's who I am. It's how I am. It's how I've always been. Cool. I need to set the business up, life up, clients up, like, like. So I just don't do this thing. Like for me, there's certain people I can interact with because they just like suck me and take me to a place that I'm just like, I can't interact based on how I am. I just naturally will get sucked into that. So we just go, no. <laughs> No, oh, thank you. <laughs> That's, <yes. laughs> That's so, amazing. I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that business hat too, because uh, what, what we're seeing right now, we also own a cosmetology school. So we're seeing so, that people are like, oh, I want to have my own business. And so 99% of our students, when we meet them, their goal is to have their own salon suite. And some of them do it right out of school. And I'm like, oh, no. You know, and a couple of them do make it. They do yeah. extremely well. Educational. Yeah. So, like there's, there's always yeah. outliers. There yeah. are those yeah. do that do. But even in that, I feel that there's a realm when you go straight. And, and I love studios, love studio life. I love the independent movement. I think it's amazing. The world, the world's changing. We're in a totally different world industry. There's such an amazingness to it, but there's also like a reality to it. In a sense, school like school does not teach you how to be a full fledged business person, right? Like right. It, it's it's not supposed right. like, so like it's not supposed right. to also in a certain way. There's like the life experience and all of that. One thing I was actually on a podcast a little bit ago talking to the National Counselors of America talking about non traditional secondary education like our industry, and a lot of like good points were like brought up and. We're just in a totally different world. And a lot of them were like asking like, oh, well, should, should these people go and get a business degree? And I actually listened to one of the other guys at podcast. And that's what I think you had said. A lot of the students mm-hmm. have thought like, I'll go to hair school. Then I'll go get a business degree. Honestly, right. fuck a fucking business degree. <laughs> like go work for someone, which is why like I'm a huge yeah. component on mentors, Great. assisting. Go work for someone once again, who has done what you wish to achieve. When I moved to LA, I worked at one of the most beautiful, top, amazing salons. Like I would have designed it exactly the same way. It was amazing because at one point that's what I wanted to open. Mm-hmm. Then I go into that and was like, oh no, don't want to like deal with like any of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I went to work for someone who ran a 10 chair like boutique salon. Mm-hmm. And I learned from then of like, okay, what, do, what are the actual day to day tasks you're doing when you run a salon, when you run a studio Hmm. too, when you're independent, it's very different. Like I have people who work for me and essentially, yes, he can just walk in. Everything's like, there's nothing to do. He really can like walk in, walk out. And like, everything's like done for him, which what it should be. That's like the exchange. Um, When you're in a studio, when you are the salon over of the boss, you're literally your daily things you have to do, the conversations you have to have, what you need to focus on change. And that was a huge thing I got from working. It was actually Kazumi who in Salon Kazumi in Beverly Hills, watching her and seeing like, okay, every day she has to do these things. Do you even want to do those things? Mm-hmm. 
And I think when some people, because yeah. they're not looking at it from a realistic point of view, and that's what happened to me. I watched her and honestly, it also coincided with COVID hitting and like everything. And I really looked at it and was like, I don't want to do those things every day. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to have those conversations. I don't want to talk to those people. I'm way too direct and blunt, which is like, <laughs> um, it just like me personally on the daily, I didn't want to have these conversations, worry about these things or do those physical tasks. And I think people don't realize that like, there is a list of things you have to do that come with it. Mm -hmm. Some are okay with that. Like I got to the point where it's like, okay, in the studio realm, the things you have to do, I'll take it. I love it. I like doing those things. It works. It works with me. It works for who I am. Um, like I said, and that plays on being really clear on like who you are, what you do not like. Um, I think a lot of people do the, okay, so there's this. You became a successful hairstylist and by successful, I mean, you're grossing a significant amount. You're grossing well above the average. We can say six figures, whatever, even more than that successful hairstylist um and then they do really successful and then they go oh i'm gonna open a salon well you were a successful hairstylist based on the artistry you and also some people like me like there's business already mixed in there some people naturally do kind of have that business sense they do bring it into the things but i find let's just go average most people you were really successful stylists making money but you've still never run a business. Your artistry got you to that $100,000 number. The business stuff didn't take you further. Because we also know people who are really good artists make right. no money. We know mm -hmm. people who are horrible artists and are fully booked. Right. <laughs> That's true. And, like, and, and make money. <laughs> like, like so our weird. industry focuses, I find a lot on like the highlight. The highlight technique is going to make me six figures. No technique will ever make you six figures. That's, that's not the reality of how it works. And if you're going to classes and they're teaching you, oh, this highlight is what made, like, did this, did this, did this. It, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, do, it doesn't. Right. The, like you right. said, the fact that there's people who do shitty hair and make a bunch of money just, like, proves that point. Yeah. And we always hear that, like, 80-20 thing, 80% yeah. you, 20%, like, skill. And I agree. Yeah. There's like factors of making money and 20% is skill. 20% is personality. 20% is environment. Like there, there's these things that like all factor into it. So also when people then open, let's go back to like from hair school to studio, you don't have the knowledge of experience. You've never had enough experience in a salon giving a experience we're also now in a world that values experience way more. That's what I focus on right. in my business. And that's right. what um, numbers wise brought so much up was I focused on people and experience. Mm -hmm. It was like a huge thing for me that massively changed my trajectory and growth and honestly survived 2020. Yeah. Focusing on those things. And I think also the fact that you're slow. <laughs> Let's just be honest. You're slow when you first get out of school, right? You don't, you don't have the revenue. It, at, at the end yeah. of the day, Bill, there's literally a right. dollar amount. Love a spreadsheet. There's a dollar mm -hmm. amount you need to be able to pay. And if you're bringing in zero dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's like I've watched problem. a bunch of people come into studios right. and leave. But just because you build it doesn't mean they're going to come. Agreed. Right. They don't just I'd show love up. I'd love to hear more about your habits and, and the mind shift that you made when you moved and you went from that 100,000 to 200 to 300 to 400 because that's astronomical okay. and, that's <laughs> and that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal right. to hear for our industry because like you said, the average is 27,000. So to be talking to someone who was comfortable at 100, yep. moved and continued to exceed that year over year, like what were those habits and what was that mind shift that you made? You know what? It really was. I was actually at a seminar with Chris McGarrahan. It was called um, Hairdressers Making Money. And in it, it's where he said, like, he was like, no, like, hairdressers make $27,000. Like, and that was the moment I literally said, and part of my French said, fuck being average. Like, it really, I was like, I want to be exceptional. And there was this mental thing of like, okay, if you want to make exceptional money, you have to be an exceptional person. Yeah, 
Right. Mm. Like ex- average results get average number. Like, I mean, average actions get average results and average numbers. Like the thing is doing 400,000, doing half a million, doing 300,000, even doing 200,000 compared to the average is exceptional. So you have to be an exceptional person. So that when you have to be exceptional with your word, you have to be exceptional with your habits. And all of this knowledge, like I didn't just think of, I was 21 when I moved to LA, like 21 year olds don't know how to make $400,000 a year. Like they don't. And that's, like I said, where my business mentor came in, Kiara, and having the accountability of that and having someone keep me focused. Um, Mm -hmm. Our industry is full of ADHD people pleasers. Mm -hmm. Just going to blanket that, not everyone, but it is what our (laughs) industry, like an empath, ADHD, people pleasers, neurodivergent. It's fucking awesome. But like, that's the reality of Mm -hmm. it. Um, So having someone keep me focused. (laughs) literally focus on this one thing like and not doing from here to here it really was I did this now let me try to do this now let me try to do this um another big thing was I really started to cut out the bullshit so there's Mm. a lot of distractions in our industry in our world like take our industry out of it just in our world there's so many distractions and over time I just really got good with cutting those out down to, I'm not really even on social media a lot. I have the salon Instagram on my iPad. I don't go on it on my phone. There's so much distraction mm-hmm. on that. There's also so much people just spewing bullshit and eating their own shit. Where these are, you don't know if someone's actually done it either. So you're listening to people, you have right. no clue what their revenue is. Right. Or people that are like, I make $100,000. You never made $100,000 behind the chair. You only started making $100,000 and you started teaching a technique and doing hair behind the chair. Mm-hmm. Like, so there's a lot of that happening. People take one class and like now they're teaching. It's not real. Which is why like people don't get results from it. Which is why like you can go to 50 different two like highlight classes and your highlights aren't $5,000 because they say in every class you're supposed to raise your price. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, but the amount of highlight, like, I'm already expensive, but like the amount of classes I've been to, I should be like, <laughs> like it should be insane. Um, like I said, cutting out the distractions from people that also in your own self, like finding a therapist, there's a whole <laughs> mental side of things and having that accountability and that person to talk to because we are subject to our own paths, paths. And if you want to evolve and grow into a different person, you have to leave some of those things in the past. And to do that, we have to deal with things. And especially if we are people pleasers, it's not an easy thing to do to set boundaries to people. And you kind of have to go backwards a little bit and think, why? Why am I such a people pleaser? How did that get shaped? How, and like, that's just the reality of it. Um, So working on myself, was like another huge component about that. And then being extremely clear where I wanted to go. Number wise, Mm -hmm. where I wanted to go, where I'm still on the journey, like did 400, over 400,000 last year. That's not my goal. Like we're not done there. Um, But I was very clear number wise where I wanted to go. So I could reverse engineer that. Um, I also was very clear on the physical life I wanted to live. So I would actually sit there and meditate and visualize waking up in the morning. What is my morning routine? How am I going into the salon? What do I would literally visualize the booking system and visualize the appointments? What does the day look like? Hmm. Not just like, oh, I want to make this money. Like, no, no, I want to make this money and I want to go in at 10 and I can see the, I can see my schedule and I have like these three clients today and what are, what are those average service numbers? Like being even, I would even visualize my personal Excel spreadsheet of all the numbers like adding up. Um, Like I said, and okay, I'm leaving work at four o'clock and how am I feeling through the entire time of that? So I'm focusing on the numbers. I'm also like, how am I feeling day to day in the salon, in my life, when I'm interacting with one of my stylists, how am I like, to shape what I want? And I'm just, I just get very clear on that. And then knowing what you want as opportunities come up, as things need to shift, you're thinking with that mindset, mm-hmm. that helps you say no to things a lot easier too. Because you know, if I say yes to this, it's saying no to the thing I really want. 
And that can be really hard. And that was something I really struggled with, especially with stopping taking color client. Like I only take new extension clients and stopping taking and saying no to these things was hard because in a sense for me, it was easy money. I can do, I could do it with my eyes shut um, and I had the time, but saying yes to that was saying no to the thing I really, really wanted. Mm -hmm. Like also being like very clear on that. Um, so good. So I, much. I love how you're talking about people pleasers. And, and I was just thinking, cause I was coaching an entire uh, school team, you know, management Ooh. team, and they all struggle with being people pleasers. Right. And so what is your recommendation to work through that process Ooh. to grow? Oh, that's such a good one. Cause like you said, like you, like everyone at every level faces that, like yeah. even I resolved a lot of that. And like, there's still, it's kind of like one of those natural things about you that you have to be aware of. Like mm -hmm. said, even now working on so much of it, there's still like a part of me that, that is that too. Um, yeah. Ooh, to work on that one. <laughs> uh, I would a more of a people <laughs> challenger, right? I so, think it honestly starts yeah. to play on self worth. You you mm -hmm. really yeah, have to I start agree. to think you're mm -hmm. worth more. You have to have kind of that good spot playing on confidence. How yeah. do we get confidence? Action plus results equals confidence. Yeah. So you also have to. There's an realm of taking the leap. I also believe in doing things like in safe scenarios with certain, but I call them like safe clients where, so let's, let's play this scenario. You, you want, you need to charge someone more mm -hmm. and you need to set that boundary. You are, and this is probably everyone kind of relate to this. You're so oh, scared yeah. to like, you've raised everyone prices, but this person's are <laughs> say, actually, no, you've started to raise prices. So you haven't had this conversation a lot and it's scary. Mm -hmm. You need to do it like a few times and all of a sudden you'll just be like, boop, 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 boop. it'll come out. But the action plus the result equals the confidence. So you can't sit and do nothing. There is a physical action and you want to set yourself up for success to get a positive result. You don't want to fuck with your head and get a negative result because you do it, you get a negative result. You're like, I'm never doing this again. I'm never right. raising prices. I'm not talking to anyone ever again. <laughs> <laughs> so I also view it like this. Say you have a new client come in for a consultation and you have like a January 1st, you have a new set of prices. You've never told anyone this price. What is there to lose? If all of your bills are being paid, you have money going into savings, you have an established clientele and someone new comes in. I call that a safe client because what's the worst thing they're going to say? No. And what changes in your life? Absolutely nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. So like when you're going, when you're trying to develop those skills kind of look, who are you doing it towards? And be like, okay, because guess what? If that person says no, nothing changes in your life. Mm -hmm. That person says yes, everything changes. Because now you go, ooh, someone's paying me $400 for that highlight. No one's ever paid me $400 for a highlight before. Mm -hmm. But now your brain knows. So then when you start doing those things, it's easier to say that. So, so bring it back to the people pleasing it's, Working on that, like you have to take action. You can't sit and wait. And I see that a lot nowadays. It's a lot talking, a lot preparing, a lot of this. And mm -hmm. it's like, you just have to like, you have to do. Agree. You have to take an action. Yeah. Um, to it, self-worth. One thing I also do that I find has been extremely helpful in that realm, um, almost every morning and especially every morning when you're starting this and really working on this, a journal. You've mm -hmm. probably heard this from a whole bunch of people. <laughs> Oh yeah. Journaling. Specifically. Mm -hmm. like, it's huge. Um, specifically yeah. what I do in the morning is I always have a gratitude um, and then trophies. So one the way us humans are wired, I'm all into psychology. Our brains lie to us and they're very negative to us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so for the, the trophies is you, you, you bring yourself up and you start your day here so when all these things from your brain, life, world, clients come at you and you start to get knocked down a little bit, you're mm -hmm. still up here versus mm -hmm. you start here and you get knocked down and you're just trying to get through the day kind of thing. Um, and I mean, and trophies can be something as like, you know what? I Yesterday, I got that new client. Uh, it could be, I woke up and walked my dog this morning. 
Like yeah. it can really be anything. Sometimes like I got up and I, I went to the gym, like the smallest things. Cause you know what? I didn't want to take my dog for a walk today. <laughs> but like, you know, what? I got up and did it. Give, give myself a fucking trophy. <laughs> like it, it's like one of those things. It can be big or small, but yeah. give yourself those trophies starts Good. to also bring that forth and give you that confidence as well. Cause you're like, wait, like, you know, like, like I'm right. Like this week I got those three clients. I handled that situation. Great. I finished work at four. I went to the gym three times and you're like, okay, yeah. Like that adds to that self-worth. Um, I'm always big on the gratitude realm of thing. Cause just energetically in the world, that is like a really high vibration. And when you are grateful for what you have, the universe will give you more. Um, that also helps with clients and the day and everything because you're starting the day in a more grateful, like, you know, it's really awesome. I'm really, I'm grateful for my kind, generous clients. Even if not all your clients are kind and generous, right? I'm grateful for my cl- kind, generous clients. I'm grateful to live somewhere where there's sunshine. I'm so incredibly grateful to be in my own environment, in my own studio. I'm incredibly grateful for the stylists that work for me, say them by name, like really bringing that forth just starts your day and the perception of the world in a much different place. So you kind of hit on something. Um, and I have a couple more questions for you too. I'm sure Sean does as well. I wish we had you for eight hours, but <laughs> like, I, I love you. Today. I think you're amazing. <laughs> it's so I'm like, good. I'll come back. We'll do this again. <laughs> so you have, you have stylists that work for you mm-hmm. in your suite. So talk about that. How does that work? Um, I was like, just kind of like a normal salon, but the way I viewed it, when I was setting up the salon, I was like, okay, it's 2020. The whole fucking world changed. Right. I said, fuck the old salon model. Fuck the mindset. Fuck this. Fuck the structure. Like literally I went wipe my mind clean. Everything I've known before this point, because our industry is based on a world 50, 60 years ago, not much has changed. Like until the last like 15, 20 years, technology, social media changed everything. Um, Mm -hmm. even down to like how clients interact with the salons. Like, yeah, it used to be, oh, I'm going to like a Redkin salon. Now it's, I'm going to Susie. Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's not always the salon name. It's not, it's not the product anymore. If you're going to a person and I think to try to continue to operate in the, I, I want my people working for me to be independent, to be handling these things, even though they're under me and they're in the, in the umbrella, the world we live in now, no clients talk directly to you. They don't need to go right. through the salon and like all of that. Cause mm-hmm. even when I was opening the salon, I had to look back at the last few years and think anything that wasn't smooth with a client, what was it? Where did it stem from? How was it handled? How would I have prevented it? And to mm-hmm. be honest, most of it came from a front desk. Like the four scenarios right. I thought of all came, well, if I would have talked to the person first, literally none of this would have happened. So I have clients directly interact with their stylist. Mm-hmm. Like there, there's not the front desk realm of things. There's not me doing it. The moment Zachary gets a client, I say, okay, give her your card with your number. And like, you guys do everything. Um, that also goes on experience and service. Clients like that a lot more. There's less mm-hmm. of like a runaround. There's much more ease to that. Um, really just giving them the support they need so that they can be independent, know how to handle these situations. That was like a big thing for me as I felt like so much was gate kept and I had to figure mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. Like just life and doing and like even down to something as like sending an invoice. Like, I remember the first time someone was like, oh, send me an invoice. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, how do I do that? <laughs> what kind of even is that? How do I do this? What? Like, huh? Like something as simple as that. Like yeah. you want to set your people up for success. And that's also the exchange in the world. Like we're in now is more, I feel like when you're in a salon, you have people working for you and they're on commission. And that realm is being more of that mentor realm because that's what people want and need yeah. nowadays. It's way less of like, I feel like like the old school realm of things. It's just like people, focus on people. What do they need? Setting themselves up. And you know what? Having the mindset of like, not everyone's a lifer. Not everyone's going to work right. in my salon forever. Not everyone's right. supposed to. And be like, okay I'm with smart. that. Right. 
Right. Yeah. Like I used mm-hmm. to work in other people's salon and every single person knew I wasn't going to be there forever. Right. Based on me, my drive. And some of them said it, some of them didn't. And it's okay. Yeah. But I think also energetically on the journey, helping that person even along the way will come back tenfold in financially too. Like, yeah. Talk to that salon owner, the salon owner model now. Yeah. And, uh, and so help us save our salons. What do you want to tell us that we need Ooh. to do differently in order to go into the next level? <laughs> well, that's great. I feel like you have to, I don't want to say provide more than we did before. I feel like it's provide different. Yes. Like it used to be mm-hmm. appealing to be like, oh, I can get like retail commission, like kind of the like the bonuses and the things you were giving, I think, wipe that away. And what makes sense in today's world? Mm-hmm. Like, OK, can we can I give you a higher service commission and we do literally no product commission? Like because to be honest, the people are like, oh, I get like three dollars from that. They're not caring. Like the motivation is also different from the stylist. Like I have seen for years, um, as an example, salon owners and everything always trying to push retail. And there's usually like out of maybe 15, there's like three that really like go and do it. And like they're that person. <laughs> don't have 10 all-stars. Right. <laughs> like, right. There's also that. So it's like, okay, you know what? On the financial business end of it, maybe like I literally, I don't do that, but I have to g- give you something else. Like I said, in thinking in that today's day and age, what does that look like? Um, yeah. Could that be through, they get some sort of access to the right person who runs your social media? Are you actually giving them, okay, the marketing aspect, we market for you on our Instagram and socials and everything. Like we don't give this, but we give this. Cause I feel like in today's day and age, that would be way more appealing to me as like a young stylist coming in being like, wait, cause that's also a whole nother skill set. And yeah. time, right? A lot of time to do that. Where, okay, wait a minute. There's a salon I'm talking to, and like they help do marketing for me. Mm-hmm. Like amazing. Like, I think yeah. thinking more in that realm, as opposed to just like I said, everything that's been done before. I kind of think just go like let's just squeegee it. Yeah. Wipe it yeah. clean and just try to think. Okay. People nowadays, that's also putting yourself in their shoes and meeting them where they're at. Um, not even the potential of where you can see them, because a lot of us, and I'm sure you guys can really relate to this, especially with schools, you see potential in people and where they could be doesn't always mean they're going to hit it. Because at the end of the day, it's up to them. Like you see the potential, like, oh my God, you could go do this. And they may and they, or they may never. It's all up to them. And sometimes I say getting out of their own way. Yeah, um, the kind of realm of things, but oh, good. that made me think about what we used to do, and we need to do this more. Is stay interviews? What would make you want to stay, right? And like good. you said, just think differently, and you know, look at what they have. Like, is it short of giving them a you know brand new car? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> what everyone wants yeah. is different too. I think yeah. like. Some people want, like I worked at a salon and I was promised one thing and that that was a financial like thing. It literally was like a dollar. If you do this, you get this X amount of money. Um, mm-hmm. And what ended up happening is along the lines and time period, they ended up giving me like a lot of gifts. Gifts are cool and great. Gifts, not my love language. <laughs> 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 and I was here for me personally, it was, I, I I wanted the money. I wanted that check. I wanted that bonus that I was promised. And they were like, oh no, but like, we gave you all these things. Understanding what did the person want? Yes. Because there were other people who would have been like, oh my God, no. Yeah, totally get it. Great. Like you did give me all these things. And like, that's great. And to me, I'm like, that's all cute, but we discussed this. Yeah, so the moment through. I didn't get that, follow they through. lost me. That was the moment okay. my brain, my brain switched um, mm-hmm. For business owners too, my big thing is you don't fuck with someone's money. The moment you fuck with someone's money, I agree. they're gone. Yeah. It might not happen right mm-hmm. away, but yep. the switch yep. clicked and it's done. Yeah. So you have to be very careful if you do change, because also in business, you do have to change things. Like I like mm-hmm. if you are, say, changing what your agreement was with the stylist and what I'm offering, say 
someone watches this and like, oh yeah, no, I'm, I am going to stop retail commission and I'm going to try this or do that. You can't just take away. Yeah. It'll be the same thing. You also right. need to exchange and give. I prefer to give in a greater way. Like that's like, you know, I'm taking this way, but I'm going to give you this, which is equal or even more better than the thing we had in before. Because if not, then why would they even fucking care? We're understanding right. it from the business logistical side. That's not the place they're coming from. And being the younger stylist or whatever, it's not, it's not theirs to worry about. They should not be having to worry about the business. They should have to worry about their business inside my business. Mm -hmm. uh, Great advice. Thank you. <laughs> well, I think we can uh, definitely see why you were uh, one of the top 100 uh, beauty industry game changers of 2023. You definitely, <laughs> you. you definitely brought a lot for us all yes. to uh, think about for sure. So how so can our nice. listeners uh, get in touch with you and, and find you? Um, find with me. So Hair Lingerie, the studio LA is business Instagram. Interact with that one. I do also have Ryan Sanger. That one I'm literally on like never. So if you want to interact with me, <laughs> see things. Um, Hair Lingerie, the studio LA. Um, Instagram. There's also TikTok. Um, if you want to check out like the studio's website and stuff, see how that's set up, flow information. Like, and I say that more of like business owners. Like I'm always looking to see like what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. Like totally check that out um yeah awesome love it well thank Thanks you again. so much for uh spending some time with us today and we will definitely be back for a uh, part two i'm oh i'm excited i mean i can talk for hours on this stuff thank you guys so much <laughs> for having me thank i really you, enjoyed Ryan. it everybody's gonna love this thank you oh, so I'm much so glad. <laughs> All right. have a great rest of your day bye everyone you too bye <laughs>